We're back for another exciting episode of The Spicy Life. I am your relationship expert and magnetic matchmaker, Spicy Mari. And of course, as usual, we have a lovely guest in the building for this episode of Multicultural, Multidimensional. And we have the beautiful, the amazing Janelle Danza. Give a round of applause. The crowd goes wild. Hi, Janelle. Janelle is a part of the spicy life and she is an incredible human being who is on her self growth uh, glow up female empowerment kick right now and it's something that we should always be applauding and highlighting and so I wanted to bring her on this show so that we could explore more about the multicultural plight and she is a lovely black woman who can speak a lot to how she started her business so On today's episode, Janelle is the multifaceted woman. She is a dancer, HR professional, new dog mom, new homeowner, and new entrepreneur. She lives in Houston, where she was crowned Miss Puerto Rico 2016 of the Houston Caribbean Queen pageant. And she is on the leadership team of I Love Being Caribbean and on the Diversity Council Committee. She just launched a new travel site called Rizos Travel, and you can book your trips and curly hair products on her site. Be on the lookout for her new book on curly hair affirmations coming out soon. And yes, fellas, she is single and beautiful and lovely and intelligent and incredible. I love her to death and had to bring her on because I wanted her to talk not just about her business experience, but how she was able to incorporate her culture and all of the many cultures, because she's going to go through all of them in a second, into her passion projects and make it a business. And so in order to warm you up, Janelle, welcome to the show. Welcome to the spicy life. We are going to dive into SPICY. So you're going to start off by telling us when did you first fall in love with self? What was the moment that you were like, mm, I love myself right now? I would say I recently just started falling in love with myself. It's just growing up, becoming a woman, learning from all the mistakes, healing, and now operating on my purpose. So, Ooh, you know, I love, operating. you know, I love the word purpose. <laughs> Putting your purpose, that's when you really start to fall in love with yourself and start attracting all the good, like you. Oh, I love you. Tell me more. Tell me more. No, <laughs> this is about you, this episode, and you are doing a lot of things right now from you know, buying a new dog to starting your business and also uh, professionally dancing. You know, you've been teaching dance forever. And you have also merged uh, a travel business with curly hair. And we're going to talk to, you know, how you merge all of these, you know, multidimensional things into a business. But I want you to talk about how you discovered that these were your passions. Yes, I do have a couple of passions. My first passion, dance. It's really just part of my culture. I grew up dancing in the living room. People ask me all the time, how did you learn to dance? at home i didn't take classes learning salsa like that's just part of my culture and i love it to this day i always say that's my first love i love salsa and because i love dance so much i always wanted to learn about other dances Mm -hmm. and also other cultures so i always explored other dance styles i trained in jazz and ballet for years i've danced in so so many different african and caribbean dances such as like isomba soca dance hall um Compa music. I mean, I just, I love dance. I love music. I love culture. So that's where my dance passion comes from. Um, I love traveling. Travel, I've been traveling since I was a baby. Uh, my whole life, I've been traveling. Uh, my dad was an expat in oil and gas. So every couple of years, he was living in different countries. So I would spend my summers in different places. And even as an adult, I always wanted to go somewhere new. I really would travel every single month somewhere new, just because I want to experience the dancing in a different city or country, try their food, and just learn more about cultures and meeting other people. So I just, I love expanding in my knowledge just about other people. It sounds Um, like you challenged yourself too, to like do like dance in every city. Like it's almost like you challenge yourself. (laughs) I absolutely, it's where do I go dancing? Where do I go eat? And those are, that's the top two questions anywhere I go. It don't, it don't matter within the U.S., outside the U.S., but I, I have to. And then that's how I keep on adding to my book, travel recommendations, which I can talk more about um, when we get to my blog. Yeah. Um, 
but uh, of course my curled hair, I mean, I'm naturally curly. I'm mixed, I have mixed hair. Um, that's also been a journey to learning to embrace and love hair as well. And, you know, uh, that's something I recently also learned to love because I used to be really embarrassed and ashamed of my hair. And now I refuse to put heat or straighten it just to be accepted. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think uh, we all had to go through that, like, process of learning to love our hair. And that is also a part of like learning to love yourself and, you know, accepting and embracing everything that you, you know, were born on this earth with. You're going to tell me, uh, I for intimacy and you're going to tell me what is your favorite position? What's your biggest, what's your favorite position? This might be a basic answer. <laughs> I mean, I love cuddling, so anything that's like... <laughs> Are you big spoon or little spoon? <laughs> both. <laughs> I like both. But we can switch. Um, I love spooning. I love cuddling. And I know it's like, it sounds super basic. You guys, but... if you're paying attention, I'm giving you insight into what she likes. Come on now. <laughs> Okay, you're going to give me a C, which is communication. So I want to know what's the best compliment someone's ever given you in your life? Someone communicated this to you. What's the best compliment they gave you? Honestly, I've received a few. Oh, my um, God. It must be so hard being you. <laughs> it can be from anyone. <laughs> you know, honestly, I do love it when I get compliments from women. Mm hmm when they tell me that I inspire them, whether it's to travel, travel alone, go to mm. a new city, um, try a new dance, um, embrace their curls. And I, I get those um, comments often. Mm -hmm. So I won't say it was just from one person, but that just makes me, um, or confirms that I'm in my purpose, that I'm inspiring others, whether it's to embrace their hair, travel the world, and, or learn to dance. Because those are all my passions right there passion and you have an interest in my passion or you want to discover my passion that makes me really happy I love that and then you have to give me the why for yes uh in s-p-i-c-y and that is when you conquered a fear when did you say no to no and say yes instead I just conquered my fears by buying a house oh <laughs> um, yes I just closed on my house three weeks ago today Congratulations. Yeah. Even though I already knew that. I'm still <laughs> I was like, congratulations on the <laughs> on the show. But you are doing a lot right now. <laughs> it's a big deal. Yes, it is a big deal. It's a huge commitment and a huge investment. Well, now we get to dive into what the episode is about. Okay, now that we got you warmed up on SPICY, this episode is about being a uh, multicultural, multidimensional. And I want you to speak a little bit to all of the cultures that you embody. Talk to me about your ethnicity. Yes. Go ahead and read off the list. Yes, this is what I, I'm asked this question almost every single day. What yeah, most of us are. Yeah. <laughs> and no one guesses right. <laughs> Okay, so my mom, she is Black and Puerto Rican, and my dad is Spanish and Filipino. So each of my grandparents are a, a different ethnicity, which is amazing. I got to grow up just with all different in my household. So what inspired me, and I'm pulling, I'm going to pull it up on my phone right now, was that I feel like, and this is speaking to our experience as identifying as uh, multicultures, multi-ethnicity, right? Um, we represent Black women, but we also represent Latina women. You also represent Filipino women, uh, but society identifies us as Black women or mixed girls, right? So I saw you post, and I'm going to your, I'm going to read it right now, if you don't mind. I saw you post this like beautiful photo of yourself. Uh, and you were addressing ethnicity and you brought up a topic that I feel like is somewhat controversial when it comes to us having to decide what we are based on who's asking, based on the environment, based on what application we're filling out. 
and you said, select your race, only choose one. And then quotations, other. I'm black, I'm Spanish, I'm Puerto Rican, I'm Filipino, I'm Caribbean, I'm Latina, I'm American, I'm human. Being multiracial has always been a beautiful battle. I never knew where I fit in. I always felt I was never enough. I hated the pressure to choose which side, but today I want to let the world know I love all of me. I love my melanin skin. I love my curls. I love being mixed. I will not choose a side or prove myself. And most of all, I love you. We are one beautiful human race. God created us and his work is good. Do not let this world tell you you are not enough because you are enough. Let's stop the division and love one another. And then you put a ton of amazing hashtags, unity, love, change, agape, love. Why, why this text? Uh, where did this come from? And why they need to feel like you needed to address your ethnicity? Was some, was, were, you, were questions being asked to you? Were, you know, people coming down? Like what, where did this uh, message come from? Honestly, I was triggered in the last, couple weeks just with all the political things going on and the race war that we're currently in and comment again oh you're mixed uh, or I won't I would expect something from a mixed person and it kind of triggered me that I'm still in 2020 being labeled as mixed or not black or not black enough or she doesn't count and it's something I've been told since like elementary school and and now as an adult i'm still being told the same thing and at the end of the day my skin is black the police will look at me i'm black they're not going to say oh she's mixed so mm -hmm. she's good like, right they don't care that you're mixed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so I'm, like, I'm still black. yes i'm mixed i'm multiracial i represent a lot of ethnicities but at the end of the day i'm viewed as a black woman and i will always embrace that and fight for that and I don't want to, I'm not going to accept anyone telling me I'm not black enough or I don't yeah. count because that, this is not true. And I, and I want to tell the same thing to the other women who are mixed that don't let anybody tell you that. Like you are black <laughs> and it's something to be proud of. Yeah. And I think that that is with the climate being um, and the tension being so high right now, there's a lot of mixed people who feel like, yes, they, you know, do stand as a you know black woman or black male but society is going to tell them that you know because of the color of their skin or because they're too light or because you know they're not full they don't understand what the experience is and what you know us as a black community has to deal with and so they don't know if their voice matters or if their voice is heard because they do have maybe one of the parents who's an other or maybe even like you and I, both of our parents are mixed. So they don't they don't necessarily feel comfortable speaking up on behalf of Black Lives Matter. And what you did, I felt like was saying like, nope, I do identify, you know, as a black woman, but I also identify as these other things as well. I don't have to choose in order to represent my people. Nope. And I thought it was courageous and it gave you, or it, it, one, it's therapeutic, right? Like saying your thoughts out loud. That's oftentimes what we see happens on social media. We use it as a platform to be able to, it's like our second journal. Um, yeah. But in addition to that, you gave you courage to other people to address their ethnicity as well, I felt like. Um, because regardless of who was attacking and why, it is something that, as a mixed um, person, understanding that society wants you to sometimes choose so that they can put you in a box and figure out how to treat you based on what ethnicity you are. And so when you addressed the like, hey, I can still be a part of this movement and still represent my other cultures as well and, you know, take pride. I feel like they, you know, people would just forget that we've been fighting to prove or to, you know, be accepted for so very long when it comes to like all of our communities, <laughs> when it comes to all of our ethnicities. Uh, and that's not to be a sob story. What it is, is to be, um, is to identify the fact that at a certain point we have to address and be accepting of ourselves because who cares if other people won't accept us? Like we have to come to that like aha moment and come to the moment of, I love myself regardless of who says I'm enough or who says I'm not. 
And I think that's what you did. I think you were like, you know what? I'm going to shut these voices down. Let me address this. And so you being, you know, all of these, you know, ethnicities, how do you learn more about all of these, you know, cultures? What, what, how, how well do you identify with all of them? It's definitely been a struggle trying to learn every part of me, but it's something that I've always been open to learning more of. Um, I, mean, I did come from a single parent home. My mom and my grandmother raised me. They're Black, Latinas. So that is the culture that I identify with the most because mm-hmm. that's what I was surrounded by the most. But of course, I want to learn more about my Spanish side and Filipino side. I went to Spain last year to Madrid where my dad is from just to learn more about the culture and how the people are. And just, I just, I want to just learn about my culture, but other people's cultures as well. I just think it's a beautiful thing. And I just don't want to choose. I don't think we have to just stick to one. It's, it's such a beautiful world out here. And I just want to learn about all the cultures, including mine. How does it make you feel though, when you see other Afro Latinas or um, Latinos denounce that they have black blood or African heritage or roots? Oh, yes. I, I've been seeing a lot of that. Too, a the lot. <laughs> Sometimes I just want to tell them, like, you are black. Yeah. We are all black. It's just, where was the African boat dropped off? Like, we are all <laughs> black. We might just be black that speak Spanish, you know. It's, it's ignorance. And it's just sad that we have to continue to educate. Um, Latinos, especially Afro Latinos, that you are black as well mm-hmm. and you are Hispanic. It's okay to say you're both. I always say I'm both. For people who are listening that don't know necessarily how to address maybe that conversation um, or even defend, uh, you know, or even bring up the fact, like, because it's hard to argue if somebody doesn't believe about their heritage. That's a hard argument to have. How do you have that conversation with someone when you hear them say, or, you know, try to lean more into the Spanish European side than they do the black side. What do you say to them? Just, I bring up the history, same thing. We were all slaves, we're all descendants from Africa. Some of us have more Spanish blood, some of us have more African blood, but at the end of the day, we're still all the same. One drop rule, I don't believe in that. Like, <laughs> like, I'm, even if you have black a quarter black, we all black. <laughs> so, I, I, we're not going to fight that. <laughs> that that is exactly how they see us. But I know, you know, that it's just a hard conversation for a lot of people to have. So they're like, I'm just going to stay out of it versus, you know, diving in it. And it looks like you've been active. Um, I saw you go to the protests in Houston. And so talk to me a little bit about that experience. What encouraged you and made you want to go out there? And then how was it? Yes, I did attend the March for George Floyd. It was a peaceful protest. It was about 60,000 people out there in Houston. And it was such a powerful movement. I was actually hesitant to go, one, because I was like a lot of people, I was afraid if there was going to be any kind of violence, I didn't want to be caught up in anything. But I went, I went because I wanted to be part of history. I want to be part of this movement. And it was just such an amazing experience. I was so proud of Houston and my city. Uh, like everybody came together, like pastors, art, artists, rappers, gang members, like I mean, <laughs> people you would not see out and about. And then yet together, it was one of the most beautiful things I have ever seen. I want you to name so, drop. No, out there, name drop. Who was out there? <laughs> name drop. I mean, the local Houston rappers, you know, like Bum B and then like the, um, we had Sheila Jackson, we had Joel Osteen, we had um, George Floyd's family, of course. Um, yeah, a lot of people were out there. Um, but it was just really nice to see just the whole city come together in peace. Uh, I was definitely, definitely honored to be there and to one day hopefully share this with my kids because this is going to go down in history just to say that I was part of it and I was there and I was in the front listening to the speeches is like unforgettable no right i can only imagine how the energy is out there but this that's the point of all of this though not just so that we can change the experiences that we're having and the 
you know, and create equality right now for ourselves, but also change the experience for the next generation, our children, so that they can, you know, feel safe so that they can at least matter. <laughs> uh, we don't want them, you know, energetically even to feel the pain that we have felt. And while it's not going to heal overnight, it's a process. And so, you know, the parts that we can do, the platforms that we create, the, you know, speaking up, you know, as women, even, you know, being a part of, you know, the movement and just allowing for our voices to be heard makes a huge difference when it comes to, you know, this time right now. Because it's not that we haven't been saying this, it's just that now we're getting attention. I've never seen so many people stand up for the black community in, you know, before. And this is, it, it's an incredible period to be a part of, to finally get some acknowledgement. What I do love is that I'm seeing, uh, because this episode is about, you know, being multicultural, I am seeing more biracial or interracial, let me say interracial relationships where partners are now finally speaking up. You right, like they fell in love with a black person, black woman, black man, and now they're speaking up on behalf of us. Where before it was kind of this, you know, taboo nervousness, I feel like energy around being in an interracial relationship. And now, because everybody's being called out, now they're being forced to defend um, or even just stand up against some of the racism that they experience in their relationship or that they see their partner experience or that their children may be experiencing. I'm seeing, you know, signs that say, you know, from white moms finally saying, you know, I don't want, you know, my kid's life to not matter. My kid's life matters. And when do we ever see white moms standing up <laughs> with signs with, you know, their, you know, black daughter on their shoulders, like, I'm, I'm so excited to finally, you know, see what is happening um, and it just not be a fad. I'm hoping, you know, and I'm praying that, you know, this is the time that we get our voices heard and that we stay in this energy. Yeah. And so I, I know you were proud out there. Oh, yeah. It's just like part of me is like finally this whole, this movement is happening, but it's been something I've been standing for as a kid. So it's just really exciting to see it. Okay, now you are going to talk to me about the business uh, because you are an HR professional, but you decided that you were going to launch a uh, travel platform. Talk to me about your business. Yeah, so I just launched Resource Travel about a month ago. And with Resource Travel, it's a, it's a platform where you can book your trip. It is a travel membership type of business, but it's free to my people. So um, that includes deals on hotels, resorts, cruises, any kind of attractions, car rentals, anything with traveling except for flights. So I do want to clarify that we do not get discounts when it comes to flight. The whole flight business, that's a whole separate. <laughs> the airline business. <laughs> yes, the airline business easy yeah they're a little greedy they don't like to do all those kind of deals but everything else i got you on on my platform you just sign up for the membership it's a free membership to use for you to just save on your trip and on top of that i also have a I will recommend places to travel places to go dance hair products i like to highlight latina owned black owned hair products for yourself, for your kids, and even for men, products for men. So this is for everybody, the whole family, your girlfriends, your boyfriend, like everybody, anyone that has textured hair. And um, I have an Amazon store, so you can also purchase those products or any kind of travel accessories you may need that I will recommend. Um, so that my Amazon store link is on my website as well, along with the curly hair products, my blog, and how to book your trip. So it's all in one. I think you even have information on there of like how to take care of your curls while you're traveling too, right? Because that's always a problem for us. <laughs> I do have tips on um, how to travel curly hair products if you don't want to do the full size. I have like travel size containers also on my Amazon store where you can put your products in. Um, I, I touch a little bit of everything, care, recommendations, where to eat, where to go dance. I even have discounts on um, how uh, dancing, dance shoes, Miami dance. I have a partnership with them. 
so my followers can get discounts on dance shoes. Um, so make sure you have your dance shoes and ready to dance everywhere you travel. Uh, let me tell you, and those dance shoes come in handy because I tried to wear my own heels to a dance class. Whoo, my pretty feet were dogs. Like they were on fire. I was like, oh, I need to definitely invest in these dance shoes because it makes a difference of how long you can last even when you're dancing. Absolutely. I think people don't understand dance shoes is an investment that I will recommend for anyone. You can just have one pair, one pair of black, get some street soles. And uh, the yummy shoes that are on my site, it come with um, comfort, uh, cushions more for comfort. And like I mentioned, the street soul, so you can you can dance on any kind of floor. Um, they're comfortable. They support your ankle. You don't want to get hurt dancing on the streets in Brazil, you know. <laughs> so, like, <laughs> get some nice, comfy shoes that you can travel with. So that's very important. Like I said, everywhere I go, I have to know where to go dance. So I always bring a pair of heels to go dance and comfortable dance shoes. So be safe. You find out about <laughs> dancing hair products and uh your travel mm -hmm. recommendations uh to make our trip like the best ever i'm planning a trip right now with my husband to hawaii and uh i'm shocked at how expensive the hotel prices are already going up like flights were actually cheap it was the hotel prices that i'm like oh no they know that things are opening back up and we are thirsty <laughs> to get out of the house <laughs> So yes. hearing that you have a, a site that we can get discounts on hotels, I'm definitely going to make sure that I go in there because <laughs> uh, so, I need some of those discounts. Yes, yeah, save those coins. I believe in traveling on a budget, save what you can save. And yes, my platform is the best for it. Well, you can go to a five-star resort and pay three-star prices on my platform. So definitely recommend, and it's free to you to use it um, as a travel membership for you. Janelle, you also have a book that is coming out about curly hair affirmations. Why the curly hair affirmations? Why is this something that's needed? It's definitely something that's needed, that I needed also growing up. And the book I put together is a book of curly hair affirmations that I would tell myself that I wanted to share with other women or even younger girls who are just having a hard time embracing their natural hair, their curls, or if you just started, because I, I know it can be a struggle accepting. Yeah. So I think it's just really important um, to love yourself, love yourself in whatever part of that journey you're on with your hair, with your natural hair process. You know, a lot of us like me growing up, I always straighten my hair every single day. I had all this heat damage. I used to relax my hair. And that can take years for it to grow yeah. out. And or unless you do the big chop, um, I was not that brave. <laughs> but <laughs> you are brave enough. This is also during this great um, book to help you with your affirmations and loving your hair, like I said, in your process. So I just wanted to put something together that all women, all skin tones, all curly hair textures, um, and I want to make sure that everyone just feels included in my book and, and every day just remind themselves to embrace and love their God given, uh, curls. Oh my gosh. I love this. Cause I experienced this too with not, you know, feeling like everybody else because my hair was so curly and big and, you know, just different. My mom put like a relaxer in my hair and my sisters and then like our curl pattern wind up changing and. We wind up, you know, regretting like all these chemicals that we were treating our hair with and we had to suffer for it, like, because then it was the growing out process. But had we just embraced it and, you know, loved on ourselves a little bit more and just welcomed, even though it wasn't the best attention, if we had learned to accept and love ourselves, you know, sooner when it came to what we were born with, it wouldn't have been, you know, such a struggle. So I love that you have this book because we can even give it to kids at a younger age who don't understand, you know, and some of it is like just embracing, you know, more about your, you know, ethnic roots because it, you know, does come through in our hair and it's beautiful. But when we don't understand that and we just know ourselves to be different, we, it's, you know, there's, there's something when you're little with being different that is made fun of versus when you get older, it's like celebrated and unique. 
Um, <laughs> curls made a comeback for whatever. <laughs> I'm excited. Like, you know, cause it went through a phase in our parents phase. It was Afros. Now it's like, yes, you know, curls. So I love that you have this cause I'm definitely gonna probably need it for my daughter or son. Uh, regardless if it's a girl or boy, I'm gonna make both of them <laughs> read it. Cause I know they're gonna have curly hair too, yeah. just like their mama. <laughs> but I love this. Mm -hmm. Everything that you're, all your platforms are about, like just, it sounds like loving yourself better and more right and how you can do that through your experiences in travel how you can do that through your experiences you know with dance and you know your body language and how you can do that with your hair and so i think it's beautiful and we need to see you know more black women talking about you know their multicultural experience but then also you know knowing that we can incorporate these passions into a business i think it's beautiful yeah thank you so much for your support as well Absolutely. Thank you for having the courage to do it this year, right? Because 2020 was supposed to be like the amazing year. And it is. You are still, you know, not letting anything, you know, stop you from moving in your purpose. And that's amazing. Thank you for encouraging everybody to do that. I'm going to say something personal that you have shared with me. Um, so uh, apologies in advance. It's not to uh, make you nervous, but you shared with me when it came to travel that you haven't gone on a trip before with a significant other that you are saving that for someone, you know, that you truly care about. It's kind of like someone's gonna pop your travel cherry, uh, <laughs> take your travel virginity. Uh, but I love when I heard that because my immediate question was like, so you travel with who? And you're like, oh, I travel by myself. That to me was extremely one, encouraging, but also empowering. Talk to me about how you, one, mustered up the courage to go by yourself because a lot of us feel like, well, I'm going to be lonely or um, I'm nervous to travel by myself. It's not going to be as fun. How did you come to the realization that you were just going to take off by yourself? Yes. Body, you definitely put me on the spot. <laughs> yes, I. Yes, I've never been on a vacation. Um, <laughs> the vacation is coming. The vacation is it's coming. It's coming. It's coming. But I, I travel alone. Um, I would say wherever I go, I do make sure I know somebody there. So that's traveling by myself. I'm always going to meet up with someone that is there. Um, the beauty of dance and travel meet people and you will meet people who live in different cities and countries and when you're traveling you can always meet up with people so that's usually how I do it I may get a hotel or Airbnb on my own or I may crash at someone's place that I know that lives in that city so I'm not really truly alone safety is number one especially for women um, always do your research especially if you don't know anybody in that city yeah on where to stay but I I do travel uh, I just make sure I go where, like I said, where I feel safe, where I may know somebody, um, and I'll just go for it. I mean, that's all you can do. Just go for it and do it one time as long as you're safe. Just go for it. Traveling by yourself is not scary. Honestly, it's very freeing and liberating. And you learn so much about yourself, and you meet a lot of people that way as well. I honestly travel a lot to dance festivals around this, um, the country, different countries. And that's how I end up meeting more people. I go right. by myself and I meet more people. So try to go for a purpose, like either an event to meet someone, go to a, a museum, or just find a reason why you want to go so you're not as scared. Oh, that's a great spicy tip right there. So if you are planning yeah. a trip or there is somewhere, a place that you're interested in, what Janelle's saying is find an event that you can have to like look forward to so that that way it takes some of the nervousness away and you're going like with a purpose. And so if you know the intent behind it, it kind of makes you a little bit more encouraged to make sure that you, you know, have follow through and something to look forward to. I love that. And then, but like, for us who are, you know, questioning ourselves like, hmm, but going alone, what are people going to think if they see me, you know, by myself, you know, if they see me through the airport or, you know, at a restaurant by myself, you know, talk, what, talk to that fear, that concern about image and social perception. <laughs> I 
you may feel like you're by yourself and it will look like you're by yourself, which is going to attract more people. Like I have made so many friends at the airport lounges, at the bars, because I'm by myself. Mm-hmm. And they talk to you, oh, where are you going? Or what brought you here? And it, it attracts. So when you're by yourself, people do notice and they will want to talk to you. Like, I, just the thought of traveling alone really is, is not what you think. You, you will meet probably way more people alone. Alone. Because well, being oh. like seeing, being by yourself um, or traveling by yourself actually, one, shows confidence. And then two, it makes you more approachable because when you are with a crowd or with other people, you know, studies show that someone is, especially a man, is less likely to come up to you when you're in a large group setting versus when you're by yourself. They, you know, feel more encouraged to speak to you. And so, you know, because don't get it twisted. Other people are nervous about, you know, talking to strangers as well. It's just that when there's less people around to judge, it makes it a lot less, uh, less you know, scary and fearful for them to come up to you. And so it is a great way to meet people. So I love that you, you know, are, you know, encouraging us to start doing it more uh, because I think a lot of people, you know, are nervous around that, not just from a safety, you know, perspective, but also just from a, you know, well, how, you know, how am I going to look, how am I going to feel, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to feel like I'm a loser because I don't have someone to travel to. I think that, you know, travel with, I think that what you're saying is that like, it's actually healthy to travel with yourself instead of waiting for someone, you know, to come along or waiting for a friend to agree. Cause we all know how that planning is, um, <laughs> doing it, just doing it. Cause you want to do it and you have a relationship It is with yourself. And so it's a great opportunity to learn more about yourself and, you know, go on a trip with yourself the same way I would encourage someone to date themselves. I would encourage someone, you know, to travel by themselves as well. It doesn't always have to be, you know, with someone else because that'll hold you up from every, you know, even going on the trip if it's always dependent on someone else saying yes. Right. You'll be waiting forever. Right. (laughs) Yeah. For real. (laughs) So I love, I love that. So look, single ladies or, you know, single fellas, you know, you guys got to go to, you know, Janelle's site so that that way you can, you know, book your accommodations. And so give us, uh, you know, what site, you know, what's the name the site? It's Resource Travel. Yes. And My website. Guys... Say it again. My website is resourcetravel.com. Yes. Okay. And so um, we're going to, yeah, so we are encouraging right now just the discovery of, you know, getting back out there, but also, you know, for people who may be kind of, you know, fearful because we're just coming off of COVID, what, or what how would you encourage them to, you know, start traveling? Well, if you follow me on Instagram, which is also Resale Travel, I do share deals on other flights, hair products, or any kind of hotels, resorts. Um, Yes, the travel industry is going to boom and peak after this, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. Be on the lookout. There's going to be a lot of deals, especially on my platform. It's just deals all the time to save. So if you follow me, you you will get those updates. Be afraid. Um, We will be, um, I will also be selling some travel masks as well that says resource travel just to keep yourself safe if you yeah. want to um you know um uh, now now with travel we have to it's gonna be a requirement to wear masks yeah so make sure you wear masks stay safe always be clean bring your clorox wipe wipe down the the seats in the airport and airplanes just well, wipe down clean. the seats <laughs> I'm a germaphobe, so should we be yeah. bringing our own snacks? I always bring my own snacks, anyways, but uh, <laughs> just to be extra cautious, <laughs> bring your own snacks and drink. Yes. Uh, <laughs> take precaution. So oh, take your vitamins. Take your vitamin, your elderberries. I mean, just take that. Just take that daily. As long as you maintain your health every day. I mean, do the same thing when you travel. Bring all those items with you as well. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. We're exposed to all kinds of things all the time when we just don't know it. So I I just say, I really believe in do not live in fear. Yeah. And as long as you are taking precaution and being safe, uh, this is, it's still summertime. We can still have fun. (laughs) 
<laughs> okay, so we're going to wrap up. You were going to do the naked truth as our close out. Um, but before you do the naked truth, I have to put you in the hot seat because you are single and I want people to email me if they are interested in mingling with you. Uh, describe to me what you are looking for in a partner. Just in case anyone's out there hearing, uh, we can pitch you really quick. What is Janelle Danza looking for in a partner? I'm definitely looking for a man who is living in his purpose, who is whole and who is healed or healing. Mm -hmm. You know, we all, we all come with something we've all dealt with. We have all have a past, but I definitely want someone who is confident and secure in himself and just knows what he wants. Um, don't really ask for much, but yeah, I'm like, I'm that's not asking looking. too much. I'm like, she, yeah. she will travel by herself. She's, but she's yeah. ready to travel with you. <laughs> yeah. I definitely want someone that will, you know, be my partner, be my friend, my best friend, travel with me, dance with me, go on foodie adventures with me. Um, just someone who's on board, who's fun, who wants to try new things and explore the world. So, I mean, it's just gonna be a fun, fun time together, but also um, making some smart moves, building some gener generational wealth, you know, investing business. Like we, we gonna work hard and party hard. That part. <laughs> that part. Okay. So you guys have to email me at info at the spicy life.com. If you guys, uh, are interested through video or voice and, you know, Janelle by, by listening to this episode, but we're going to wrap up with the naked truth right now and you are going to tell me if you could have any superpower right like a superhero what would that superpower be hmm. the, the ability right to do what what is the word for it um i don't know why can i cannot think of this name where you just poof and dis and you appear where you want to be <sighs> oh uh not time travel Quantum yeah, leap? Like, is it like, yeah, it's like leaping. Yeah. So, sorry, I don't know the word, but that's what it, it is. It is time travel. Like, so you want to be able, oh, because you want to be able to travel. You want to be able to like. Yeah, uh, like I want to, yes, I want to travel and get to wherever I want to and not get on the plane, not actually go through that whole process. I just want to, <laughs> is that a superpower? Yeah, that would be a superpower. I'm like, I know I've seen that on like the X-Men uh, where they're able to like leap. Yeah, just get there. That's a just good one. It. That's a good yeah. one. <laughs> <laughs> and if you could travel back in time to any time period of your life, where would you travel to? Time period. Um, hmm. Maybe my early 20s, I would say. I would have taken advantage to travel more and dance more. Like I, 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 I was at one point waiting, waiting mm -hmm. for friends, waiting for a man, waiting for the right opportunity. And I think it was when I was like 25 when I realized I will be waiting forever. And that's when I started just I got that courage to go ahead and start traveling. But I, I think I could have traveled and went to a lot more places if I didn't wait. Yeah. I love that. Yeah, because you, you're, and yeah, you could have done so much more, but oftentimes we are waiting versus doing. And as long as you are doing and you're trying and you're in that energy, it's, it's momentum, right? Okay. And then last one, you're going to tell me if you could body swap with anyone for the day, who would it be? Ooh, body swap. You have to live their life for the day. This might sound cliche, but I love Beyonce and <laughs> I want to know what it's like to be her for a day. Um, she's like Queen B and from Houston. Oh, that's, that's true. Queen B. From that's true. Do you ever run into Beyonce out there? No, I <laughs> actually am to meet her. I'll probably embarrass myself. <laughs> We're just going to send her to the website. We're going we're to send her to the travel website. Like, hey, you and Jay should um, book a, a ticket on here in a hotel room. <laughs> I would love to dance for her one day. That was oh, that would be amazing. Yes. Yeah. That would be dope. I, and I, I, love, I love it. I love her as a performer, the, 
dancer, how she gives dancers opportunities who don't have the typical look as a dancer. Like I, I just love her. I, I, I think she's great. Definitely. You and everybody else, girl. <laughs> Beyonce is everything. Yes. Okay. So let everybody know where they can find you. Give us all your socials, your websites, everything so that they can check back in with you. So my personal page on Instagram is Janelle.Danza, which is J-A-N-E-L dot D-A-N. My travel page is Rizos Travel, which is R-I-Z-O-S P-R-A-V-E-L. <laughs> and Rizos means curls, by the way. If you didn't know, Rizos is curls in Spanish. Um, my website is www.rizostravel.com. Okay. And you guys can always play with my Twitter or stroke my IG at spicy Mari, S P I C Y M A R I go to the spicy life.com for all your relationship questions, um, advice that you need, schedule a consultation. You guys can always email me at info at the spicy life.com. If you have any questions or things that you want me to discuss in the relationship realm today's episode, you just learned that you can travel by yourself. You don't have to wait for a companion in order to, you know, travel and explore the world and, you know, add to your self-discovery. And as always, you guys have just been spiced. The spicy life.